American foreign policy will be shaped by these new democracies and how they fit into the larger story of the ongoing conflict with Iran, not to mention our complex partnership with Pakistan. These two countries figure largely in a discussion with elite policymakers, diplomats, and observers of America's relations abroad. We've got a lot of people saying um, that Russia's a problem. It is a problem. Russia's many things. It's a very difficult country for us to deal with and it opposes us on a host of issues. But it is a partner in counterterrorism. It's been very helpful in the resupply of our troops in Afghanistan. And Putin may hold the key on two big Middle East issues, Iran and Syria. If we're going to get an Iran deal, if, and that's a, that's a very difficult proposition to imagine, Russia's probably going to help write that deal. And the same is true with Syria. So despite our disaffection from Vladimir Putin and Sergei Lavrov, we got to work for, with them, and I think that's what the president's trying to do, and I think that's a sensible who, policy. Who, who is the, uh, what country is America's foremost adversary in the world? Iran. No doubt in your mind? No question about it. Jane? I'd say short-term Pakistan, bigger problem. Uh, I read a brilliant article, forget the author, but it was called Ally from Hell, uh, which made a point that at least six nuke sites great, in Pakistan are unstable, <laughs> and nuclear materials may be driving <laughs> around Pakistan. She knows. <laughs> Pakistan is just set up for, for proliferation. And I think that that is a more urgent, dangerous issue than, than a, right, well, a year or two later in Iran. Iran is an imperial power that wants to spread its influence throughout this critical part of the world. And one of its quests is to either acquire nuclear weapons or get 90% of the way there uh, because they believe it will support this imperial uh, quest of theirs and also shield them against various types of... Uh, physical uh, attack from Israel, the United States, and, and others. Uh, Pakistan poses a different threat. Pakistan is not an imperial power. Pakistan, the threat is not its strength, it's its weakness. And uh, it's an imploding Pakistan. Uh, this is, it's, a, it's a failing state. The question at some point is whether anyone there has read Malcolm Gladwell, and it, it, it tips. And what's so frightening about it, you know, the numbers are stark. We're worried about Iran acquiring one, two, or three nuclear weapons. Pakistan already probably has upwards uh, of 100. Right. And the, the question is, what can we do, if anything, to try to prevent Pakistani failure and the possibility that these weapons or materials get into the uh, wrong hands? It's already the state that's the greatest, greatest home to international terrorism, the sanctuary they provide is killing Americans in Afghanistan. So Pakistan, again, it, its threat is its, its weakness, its dysfunctionality. For Iran, the threat is something different, that Iran is on something of a quest. So the two different challenges, two both very real, two, as a result, calling forth, though, very different responses from the United States. Nick, do you think Pakistan is tipping, or do you think it's, uh, from, from, from even from the Pakistani perspective, salvageable as a unitary state? Well, it's dramatically, the situation in Pakistan is dramatically worse today than it was four or five years ago. There's no question about that. U.S.-Pakistan relations at an all-time low. Since They're 19. always at an all-time low. Though. This is the all-time low. Oh, this is the all-time low. And you know why? Until tomorrow's panel. Until tomorrow, yeah. yeah. We'll have a panel tomorrow on the all-time low. Yeah. No trust. No since, trust. Since President Obama, rightly, we, dis we decided this in the last panel, went in to take out Osama bin Laden May 1st, 2011, there's been no trust there. So, and, and, and you have now the United States looking towards a departure in Afghanistan. The President's going to take combat troops out by 2014. We're actively seeking a political deal with the Taliban, that's going to further weaken our ties with Pakistan because the Pakistanis don't want to see that. And they don't want to see India become more influential. And India is positioning itself to become more influential as a protector of Karzai. So I think it's a much more problematic security environment for us in dealing with the Pakistanis.